All right. Whee! Hey guys, welcome back to the food forest. One thing I like to do on this channel is kind of be like a little alarm clock for everybody and just, you know, a reminder, now is the time to do blank. Well, this video is gonna be all about propagating from seed. Now is the time of year to go and collect your seeds. Now there are many important phases of a season. Around here, the May 2-4 weekend is where we go and we take time off and we plant. We get everything planted. We know when harvest seasons are. One thing people don't think of enough is when is the time to go around and collect seeds from all the wonderful plants all around you. Now is the opportunity of your entire year to go and get free plants. So today we're gonna do that. We're gonna go around, we're gonna collect acorns, we're gonna collect uh, probably some asparagus berries, and we'll just go around and see what stuff we have, what stuff we can propagate easily and for free, and we're just gonna stick seeds in the ground and get free plants. So let's go. really good seed to go collecting right now are asparagus seeds and inside each of these is these little black seeds so let's open one up Okay, so we'll keep collecting some of these seeds. Now we can either uh, take these inside and start them in seed trays and pots, and they'll take about uh, about three years to become a small little asparagus fern, maybe about five until you get a decent enough size asparagus to actually eat. However, if we want, we can literally, instead of doing all of this work, do just what nature does, and basically take some of these berries off, and we can just plant the berries and they'll just pop up it's like a cluster of three plants so I think the best thing to be doing is just always be propagating plants and just do it the quick easy way and in a few seconds you can just plant a whole bunch of asparagus maybe it comes up this year maybe it comes up next year maybe it comes up the year after who knows but it's fast and easy to do. So I think just always, always be collecting seed and take small actions that will have a big payoff down the road. We'll fill in a little more of, you know, this center island guild here, maybe. Get some sea buckthorn and we'll put some asparagus companions all in and around it. The one thing, especially with asparagus, is definitely try to remember where you put it because it's one of those plants that kind of will just pop up in the spring. And if you don't know where to look, you probably will miss it. For example, right there, you can see it kind of leaning down. Something came in here and knocked it all over actually. That's interesting. Probably Lucy ran right through here. Like a freight train knocked it all over. But I'll I'll forget that, you know, right next to this pear tree, we've got some asparagus to go grab. And then, you know, I'll see it as a giant fern later on and I didn't get any. But we'll we'll remember this spot, for example, next year. So just try to remember where you plant it. Plant it somewhat organized. Um, I definitely have to get better at that because I plant very unorganized. Walking on my strawberries. So tons of this parsley seed as well, we're gonna collect. And parsley is a really, really good plant if you can get it established on your property because it will make just so many seeds that it'll, even though it's an annual, it'll act like a perennial and it'll just keep naturalizing and showing up. So definitely something worth uh, collecting if you can get uh, your hands on some parsley. 
Uh, same idea as parsley is if you can get a stand of oregano um, established on your property, then propagating that is also a really good idea. And uh, both of them are for the same reason. They attract tons of beneficial insects. So make sure that you take advantage of this time of year and go collect your seed. So here are the pawpaw seeds. So we'll go plant these as well. These are pretty big, really cool. And some pears, uh, peaches as well. I know this looks gross, so forgive me for that, but this is a bunch of uh, pear pits, pear cores that we were using to uh, freeze and dehydrate some pears, turn some into pear uh, juice, and we did that today. Did a whole bunch of pears, and we are now going to propagate them in Old Man Walking Trail. So lots of black-eyed Susan, Rutabecchia, they did very well on this um, area on this hill and we'll save and start spreading a ton of these seeds around and I definitely want to get some lavender and yarrow so let's pop up so the yarrow is here this is yarrow you can see the there's the yarrow leaves there this is the seed heads that they put on so we'll collect a lot of this we have yarrow for for days so we'll put this everywhere and the lavender, we have this kind of spread all over the place as well. It smells so incredible here. So here's some of the flowers. We have so much of it that even if I'm pulling it a little early, that's fine. We'll go get more. And we'll spread lavender everywhere. Found a little friend here. Guys enjoying a nice spot. You'll notice that everything's kind of wild and crazy. You know, we leave seed heads for all these flowers. Um, and we leave it that way specifically because we want it to reseed. So it's really important for insect diversity that they have this protein source of seed heads at the end of the year. So make sure that you consider leaving those up in your own food forest. And let's see if I can get a ripe fig here. So here is fig. They'll start turning color. This isn't quite ripe yet. Um, but if I just crack that open, you can see it is turning color. And they are so good. It's maybe a bit better. See, they should be pretty, pretty squishy. And they should just open up when you squeeze them. And they are so, so good. So figs in zone, zone four slash five. Stayed alive last year and we're getting figs this year. So here we are in old man walking trail. And uh, we will go and see what some of the soil is like here. And we might go and spread some seed down here. So let's go check this out. This is the pawpaw section here. And we'll pop over to some of these areas where I've got some, uh, some you know, deeper mulch. So this whole area was all grass before. It was just an open field of grass and we sheet mulch. So we just basically took the leaf bag and we put that down first, right on top of the grass, and then we uh, put leaves on top. And look at the soil. So the grass is all completely gone, completely gone. And the soil is very, very nice. Lots of, lots of life in there. And if you're a tree, doesn't that just look like the nicest cover of, of soil. So you can see the grass is completely gone. So the leaf bags worked really well. The leaves themselves will kind of mat out um, and they'll form these little kind of layers. They'll mat out and they'll also help smother the grass as well. So especially if they're not shredded. So not all of these leaves were shredded leaves. So they really clump together and mat and do a really good job of smothering the grass layer out. 
So here's a spot where this is south and we've got a big tree that is right behind me and we're gonna so this is a nice south facing aspect. We're gonna spread some of this oregano in this area here to get lots of sun, some parsley, and we're gonna try to kind of give it um, a little bit of a cluster. It's okay if it's clumped together. I want it establishing in a patch so then I can kind of find it again and figure out where it is. It's always good to have a tree living in the spot where it's going to live forever. If you can ever sow the seed right in the tree's forever home, then that is always a good idea. Because you'll get the tap root. The tap root will never hit the bottom of a pot. And it'll just get to drive straight down into the ground. So anytime you can get seed going, right where the tree will spend forever. That is a great, great plan. So we'll just keep propagating some of this. And then uh, we'll probably go also and get some oak. We'll get some black locust, because we know where some of those trees are near us. We might see if there's any mulberries left on a nice big tall mulberry tree that's nearby. And this is the time of season to really spread some genetics around. Food forest is kind of wrapping up for the year. It's nice to see all the beautiful colors, but it's sad when you know what they mean. I mean, we're heading into winter. So uh, yeah, just uh, apologies for not putting out very many videos lately. I have been getting my trainer certificate for uh, like refreshing it for coaching uh, youth sports so I'm a trainer on my kids hockey teams once you get your food forest going you've got an inventory of seed to spread and propagate your food forest so make sure you take advantage of it and you're always 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 spreading and propagating Raspberries just finished also. We've got our second crop of raspberries and they're finally now done. This back angle, you can see the cut in that we did for the swale on the back angle there. Sometimes I'm not really back here, show you this angle that much. And we're still collecting and eating some of these sea buckthorn. Just make sure I don't step on any trees. So these are still great. They're a very, very healthy, healthy berry. Oh, they're so good. You know what, I've really become enamored with this tree. They're a very unique, a very unique taste, but I really enjoy them. A great flavor for cooking, I think. I think someone who is very talented at culinary arts could probably harvest that wonderful flavor of the sea buckthorn and um, mitigate some of its sourness and make some fantastic dishes with it. We've got another fig here doing really well and we put another little fig over here doing great. We've got mushroom patch right in there. We will always take these mushrooms and especially these ones where the spores have been dropped on another mushroom. We know this one is just loaded with spores. So we'll take some of these and we'll just spread them all around. Maybe we'll hit this middle guild up here. Give it a nice mushroom. Nice mushroom boost. I think I've already done it here too. You can see there's great mycelium in there as well. So this fall period um, is just full of stuff like this. If you're the type, if you're like me and you go to plant sales or you see plants at the end of driveways and it makes you excited because you can 
collect them up, scoop them up, bring them home. You can see all these seed heads from different grasses that I picked up where I want to add some vertical element behind this comfrey here. So I just collected seed, um, seed heads and basically laid them down. You can really, really get tons of plant material for free at this time of season. So make sure you're out there collecting stuff. Little things like this, strawberries popping across, making their way right across this whole entire area. So this whole zone of the food forest is really going to grow and establish over the next couple years. But my goal is always to try to kind of set it up and then let it go feral. Let it go wild, let plants and wild flowers move in, even gr some grasses move in, and create a insect fun zone. So that's what we should always be trying to do. Set it up, but then kind of let nature take over. If you can, little wild areas are just so, so, so important for nature. and We really have to prioritize allowing them to develop even if it's not optimal for us we need to have some kind of things that are optimal for nature so here's the rest of the wildflower hill this is the rock hill that i planted a couple uh, peaches and a sea buckthorn there's lavender and then pretty much uh, mostly other than that it is um, pollinator plants we've got some pawpaws there and there's some jujubes down at the bottom and that is an elderberry but for the most part it's just plants for the insects and I think if you don't have an area like this in your garden somewhere where you dedicate almost exclusively to the insect life you should definitely consider it because um, insects are experiencing catastrophic collapse right now and we need everybody to pull together and create tiny little microclimates like this where they can get water they can get food and they can get a resting stop and hiding place from predators that are chasing them and hopefully we can get our insect populations uh, restored we can rebug the planet now what else have i been up to i have picked up another couple piles of wood chips um, one for myself, one for Poppy, and one for uh, my sister-in-law Sherry over at Gardening in the North. Make sure you go check her out as well. And uh, we're going to use this as a, you know, a replenishment for the mulch that we have on our gardens. I have also been going around starting to put trunk protectors on some of these small trees that we added this year. Um, so we can kind of keep them alive in their first year. That's when the the rabbit damage gets really nasty so I'll have to go around and just make sure that we have trunk protectors on everything and add them where we don't and this one here doesn't have one so we'll have to go around and continue adding I'm, you can also make trunk protectors with O pipe that you cut and you slice in half maybe I'll go quickly show you show you that it's a nice easy DIY okay so in my shed Ignore the mess. Uh, we just basically collect materials in here because you never know when they're going to be handy. And in here I have a garbage bag full of O-pipe that I've collected from the side of roads. And then you can collect, cut them into these little segments, slice a line down it, and then this is a perfect little tree, tree, trunk, tree trunk protector. <laughs> So that's an easy way to get, you know, free tree trunk protectors and upcycle something that was going to get thrown away by someone else. And we've got a whole bin full of them. So guys, that is pretty much that. That's where we are this year or this part of the season. Um, I haven't shown you this area in a while, so we'll end the video here. This is in my wilder zone. This is uh, giant willow trees that are be so beautiful. And I cut out this winding creek for the artesian well overflow, but because there's so much nutrient in this flowing water, um, we have just a situation where the 
watercress that I planted has completely enveloped this whole area. Look at that. And we've got willows planted as well. They're doing pretty well. But this watercress has really expanded and taken over this whole entire zone. So that's kind of funny. But this area we're going to pretty much leave for nature as well. And we can harvest this watercress. We can eat it. And we can also use it as compost activator. And uh, it's valuable food for wildlife as well. And then this water source is also great for deer coming up. They don't push further into my land looking for um, water. They basically just pop over here and drink from this and this pond down here. So this is one of my earlier videos. I mentioned a pond that I hand dug. So this is the pond that I hand dug. And I was planning on digging out an acre pond, but after hand dig digging this pond out, I pretty much scrapped that idea. Just have to make sure I don't fall in here. The wildness has totally obscured the edge of the pond. So this pond was about three feet deep and it has pretty much been claimed by the watercress as well. So that is a about three foot deep pond where watercress is just thriving in. You can kind of hear some flow there. So thanks for watching guys. Just a quick little update video on the food forest, including some of these wilder areas. And I will see you on the next one.